never uh, played football for Geelong, <laughs> and I've never won the Brownlow Medal. But I did have the privilege and the honour of working with uh, Roy Grounds and Frederick Romberg and Robin Boyd over a period of uh, well, some 16 years in the, the last century, the last millennium, whichever way you want it. Um, and a lot of my thinking now has developed from that, more so from Robin Boyd than, uh, than anywhere else. Um, a lot of the work that I do now is developed from the idea that uh, with Ron, with Rob, working with Robin, we had to design a house, each told design a building that was more economical than the previous one we'd done because uh, the work was such that we had to get cheaper and cheaper towards the end. And I developed over, over many years the idea of an <coughs> industrial approach to the work that was, would bring out the, the best of the, the materials, the most economic of the materials. And I think from the slides I show, uh, you'll see that, that uh, what I'm trying to get at. Um, I don't believe in, in exterior decoration. I don't even believe in interior decoration. <laughs> but it's, uh, if we can just have a naked building put up in the most simple fashion that's permanent, that's solid, um, that, it, that is industrial in its nature, there's no fancies about it at all, I think, uh, provided the client is happy with that, and most of them seem to be, that's what architecture should be. We just start with the, the first slide. The first building I did, and, and this really relates to concrete. The just first me. building I did was, was with, uh, with, with, with Romberg and Boyd. That building was at Pickett Court at Melbourne University Women College. Um, Frederick Romberg had the concept for it, but no sooner than the client had agreed to, the, to go ahead with that, uh, Frederick went up to Newcastle as Professor of Architecture at the University of Newcastle. Robin took over. He wasn't happy with Frederick's idea of the octagon, so we ended up from an octagon building, we had a square building with the corners cut off. <laughs> and that's where it ended up with. Um, Robin was away overseas quite often during the preparation of the, the design of the building. And I looked after it right from the, the very beginning, the early, early uh, working drawings right through to the, the finished building. So it's, uh, it was quite a massive job. The, the, uh, the elevation of the building, I'm not sure what's happening with it now, but it seemed to have some scaffolding all around it. Uh, but it was a very interesting job. It was all in situ, soft form concrete. We sandblasted the Oregon formwork in order to get a texture into the face of the building and to darken the concrete down so that it wasn't just a pure white building. We had the next one. Yep, Liz. yep, Linus is yep. easy. You can see there that the juxtaposition between the, the library that, that Romberg did, the main building, and the, the Macaque Court building. Um, we're often accused of having put in the Kubra hat on top of the Macaque Court, but in reality it was a combination or compromise between the, the roof of the library and the seat roof of the main building, which you can see both together there. Next one. That's the courtyard or the ground floor of the atrium. You can see the, the, the centre of the building, the shaft, light shaft going right up, and uh, all the off form concrete uh, exposed formwork, uh, exposed concrete on the inside. Next. That's the, the, the light shaft itself. Uh, the glass at the top, uh, they, they did some alterations up there just recently that I'm um, saying won an award for the uh, filling in of the roof space. Next one. After, after that episode, um, when I left Romberg and Lloyd for the first time, um, I did my own house to Tool and Earl in the, in the bush. Um, that was a situation where I was going to build it out of rock, but after I got the walls up to about uh, six, 
six inches, so I decided the rock wasn't the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so at that stage, it took them to well, maybe took such concrete because we couldn't get three cars concrete <coughs> up, the, up the road, back up the hill with the sky system. So we <coughs> poured the slab and built the, uh, the walls laying down on top of the slab. Uh, you can see the board marks on that. Uh, at that stage, it took so it wasn't used at all. And uh, we got a hold of a batch of uh, cheap chipboard <coughs> from Perth Perry Options for 10 cents a square foot. And that's what we laid it on. Um, in some places, after what, 40 years, chipboard still stuck on the concrete. <laughs> so it, it worked. <laughs> in that the concrete didn't stick to the floor, but it, uh, it didn't release the chipboard either. <laughs> Next one. <coughs> That's the plan of the building. It, uh, it faces, faces the wrong direction, in that uh, everyone tells you nowadays you've got to have the, the main wall in glass, which faces north, or what, what I did was to have the other one, the one on the south, in glass, because that was where the view was. Uh, it was a very hot site, it was sort of dry, very cool forest up there, but terribly hot during the summer. So by putting courtyards, a couple of courtyards into that long section of the house, uh, I was able to control the sun coming in, so it's been quite comfortable to live in all those years. The way it was built, uh, having given the rock away, we uh, managed to get hold of a second-hand gantry crane from ICI at Deer Park for $200 with a seven ton chain block on it and erected that over the, the long section of the house and mounted on a couple of fence posts, a uh, crowbar, I managed to slide the gantry along from one end of the house to the other, pouring the panels as we went and lifting them as we went so that each panel is in the, in the shape of a U. Uh, with two legs on it, each end, one, egg, uh, one each end. And that gave stability to the wall panel when it was erected. So then you've got two wall panels off of each other, we tied, tied the top together, and we had a, a, sta a, a stable construction. So the U shape prevented the walls from falling out, but, but it's from falling in, but it wouldn't have stopped them falling out. The living room along the front, was, was all the, in precast columns, which we poured on site, <coughs> precast concrete beams over the top on those grid lines, and a big uh, concrete feature beam along the front. So the whole house uh, is, is in situ or on-site precast, or what they call tutsta, which is a bit of a misnomer in any case, but that's what's there. The next one. That's the view of the north side. There's, there's a main entry in the middle there. There's an insect screen courtyard there and there. Uh, and it all sits in this, this very dry bush. There was a big problem with, with uh, fire. We knew that when we started, but um, it missed the, the ash wind of that fire. The fire came down one end, went down to, towards the melt, and then came back again. Uh, and this is the second time, but the bush was absolutely full of flying embers for about two hours after that. But the part of that, the house escaped. Next one. That's a view of the, the end of the, the long section of the house with the living room at that point there. Next one. Uh, living room again, you can see that the, the precast concrete beams on top, concrete columns and concrete cross beams big sliding doors at each end of the living room so we could get air passage right through the house at the time. Next one. That's the, uh, you can see the, the foreman still stuck on the outside there. <laughs> which, uh, it's like the, the uh, heritage people do, they like to, to leave things out so they can see how it was done. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we say. <laughs> um, main window there. The glass came up on the back of a truck lying on its flat. It's only six millimetre float glass, uh, which just wouldn't have a chance today. But it's been there for 40 years and hopefully it's still there now. 
little window on the side for ventilation with a, with a cedar door inside. Next one. Just the detail of the main uh, pressure beam connection with the, uh, the column and, and, the, and the sliding doors. That's the whole of the south elevation of the house, which had a view over towards Geelong, Port Phillip Bay, and the Yuyangs. That's the other end of the house. The bedroom in it. Next. And the, uh, the long elevation again from the other end. That's the, one of the courtyards. Uh, mm -hmm. We separate the entry from the bedroom wing. You've got to go outside to get from one to the other, but that hasn't been a problem. It, it uh, doesn't rain all that much up there in any case, so it, uh, it worked quite well. Yep. That's the living room, one end, the concrete floor, mm -hmm. the, uh, the chipboard marked walls, they're all exposed, and the uh, Oregon uh, plank ceiling and, and doors throughout. <coughs> kitchen into the living room. Next. That's the view from the other end, showing the, uh, the the bush around the house. The bush has been left very much as it was, or has been, for the last few hundred years. It, uh, nothing much has happened to it, and uh, it stays as it is. Next. Yeah, after, after I finished that one, I was approached by a client from Mount Macedon, who had just purchased a house at Mount Macedon, had sold a house in, in Fitzroy, or Carlton, and the Macedon house was burned down in Ash Wednesday bushfire. So we had to, they, I'd done a house with some friends of theirs at Birchard up in the Mallee, and Peter rang me the next day and said, could he come down and talk about a new house? Um, the next one. We built, we built them a temporary cottage so that they could had somewhere to live. Uh, it was very difficult at the time because all the builders for miles around were so flat out doing everything else in the house. But we managed to get that up in about three months uh, and they lived in there for a year or two while the main house was finished. Next slide. That's a view of the entry to the main house. Um, this is a courtyard on the west side, which uh, is contained on the other by a big uh, embankment, which is intended to keep the fire away from the house. Uh, the walls on this side are all concrete, insulated, and the boxes on top are, are, are to bring north light into the building at various places, whereas the, the other side of the building faces the, uh, the east and the, and the view. Next. That's the plan. It started off as a, a long passageway which runs right through. Uh, we built that section there. Then they wanted a studio for uh, Helen to, to work in. We added that on. We continued the access, so it's, a, it's like a big shooting door right through the full length of the house. Uh, the whole of the east side of the house, which is here, is, is uh, mainly glass. Uh, looking at a view, and it sits on a big, big uh, podium which is uh, just cut and fell into the side of the hill. Next. That's uh, a view down the main corridor. The, the floor tiles were just uh, ordinary concrete garden tiles, which are about the most economical tile you can find. Um, they, you can still see the condition. They, they, uh, this is last weekend, but uh, they, they've been down there for nearly 30 years and uh, they haven't changed whatever. In fact, the whole house doesn't show any, any sign of wear or, or, uh, or uh, discoloration or, or, uh, uh, or patina. Well, it does have a bit of a patina about it now, but it's very, very slow in coming about. And the concrete work really hasn't changed in the last 30 years. It just looks as though it was finished a few months ago. Next one. It's a view the other way. Um, the courtyard which they enter here, which is fire screened with a, with a box on the roof. Uh, the bedrooms open with big sliding shutters across there, and the, these shutters here can slide across the 
close off this, this uh, central axis way. Next, at the view of the fireplace, standard of fireplace and the living room, there's, there's an isolated box uh, which contains cooking and pantry on the other side and separates the living room from the, the kitchen. At the view looking the other direction. Um, on the flyer that, that came out with the program, the, the particular door that's shown on that is, is that one there. Uh, and these are just sliding shutters which close off those that are close off from the west sun. The entry box, entry room is, is there with, with a screen at the top and uh, the whole of this courtyard is just uh, uh, in living our toppings. Next, that's the view from the other side. Uh, you can see the, the shutters there which control the, the sun coming into the kitchen area. They're all operated by remote control from inside. Uh, and the kitchen dining area, meals area, is just in the area there, opening up onto uh, a lawn which is, uh, has been created on top of that podium. Next, another view from that direction from the garden. The, uh, the podium extends right through the full length of the house and gains in height as it gets to the, the south end. <coughs> next, that's a similar view. And next one. A little bit more romantic view through <laughs> <laughs> the trees. Um, next one, a closer detail of, of the timber louvers and the, and the corner of the building. Next, that's the. Uh, they keep on planting this, this thing that grows everywhere, despite my instructions that they don't. <laughs> but uh, we've managed to get. A steel frame, a galvanized steel frame now, which uh, will withstand all that growth and uh, not deteriorate, not ruin the timber. The whole of that elevation there has, has shutters uh, made out of rind zinc, perforated rind zinc, which slide the full length of that bedroom wing. In the summer it gets pretty hot with an early morning east sun, but uh, it, uh, the shutters come across there, but at the moment they, they don't work because the too much growth on it. <laughs> Next one. That's the deep detail that there, the, uh, the operable shutters on top. These are a remote standing uh, shade screen <coughs> for the, the, west, uh, the east elevation again. That's just out of rising, perforated rising. Next one. That's a corner of the, that's a barbecue area there with a stretched sail cloth over the top. Next one. At the pool at the front, this was to delineate the edge of the of the terrace. Um, they didn't want a, a wall there without. A, they didn't want a balustrade on the wall, so they put a pool in. So if you want to pull off the wall now, you've got to way through the pool to so <laughs> get there. Uh, very much, much apologies to Louis Barrigan and his pool, but this is what looks well. But they have, there's a group of ducks that fly around man most of them all the time and, and they, uh, they seem to love this pool. Next one, the detail of the, the concrete, uh, shadow of the window and the, the, the window posts which are all bolted with exposed connections right through. Next one, that's a corner of the, the pool, the, the pond is on top there, there's a pump room and uh, control room for all the watering in the garden. Um, they hold up here, they hold a, uh, what they call Master Music. It's a monthly music uh, session of a, of a Sunday where people from everywhere come in and they have musicians playing up uh, and they can sit out on, on this amphitheater on the outside and the weather's suitable. You can see the, the screens, the remote screen there that, that uh, show, show the, uh, the living room, show the grand piano during the the hot summer. Most of the, the trees here <coughs> uh, survived the, 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 the fire. Uh, they were pretty badly damaged, but uh, they planted a lot more to replace those that they lost, and they're, they're now coming back into their original condition. Next. 
they took the deep out of the, of the humper, the, 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 the terror steps there. Next. And that's the entry to the, the studio. Next one. This is a, another house at, at, at the, Bol the Bolabek Lakes estate at Macedon. The, uh, <coughs> the architects for this, or the, the project designers for the whole estate, insisted on houses with roofs or houses that look like Mount Macedon houses. Um, <laughs> and they wanted 20 degree, 22 degree roofs on them and brick all the way outside. But the client here said he wasn't going to have one of them in any case. Uh, the other 29 houses are in accordance with the covenant, but this one went before the, the architect, the original architects, which had to approve of it. And the, uh, the architect just said, what a marvelous design it is. <laughs> so we, we got away with all that. He ended up with a, a long, low house, which is what he wanted. Uh, and uh, they've been there for five, six years now. They're quite happy. Next slide. Again, that's the board mark concrete wall. Uh, this house has a, a double wall running the full length because we, they have very strong south cold winds coming in and we have to turn the house to the north where there's a magnificent view of the whole of the Nashville range. Uh, I spanned the, the roof on these big concrete beams. They sit about a metre high and they stand right across the house and everything is hung up or, or uh, is stabilised with those beams. Next one. That's the carport with an earth burn on the outside. It's, it's still uh, establishing itself, but it's, it's doing quite well with uh, tussock grass and, and creeper. The, uh, there's a big gap between, or courtyard between the garage and the, the house itself. Uh, and uh, there's, there's a car park in it sort of six-car garage there with the water tanks and all sorts of other things in there. Next. That's uh, an end view of the house. The uh, trees here are being planted to create a hedge to conceal the main bathroom. Uh, and you can see the beams which run right across the full width of the house there. Next one. The beams project at the other end. And we've got sailcloth um, stretched between the beams to provide um, some sort of uh, sun protection during summer. Next one. Well, that's the side of the house where you get the view of the Maston Range. And it's all been planted out with coos grass, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's doing very well. Um, the little room at the end there is, is a, a courtyard which is intended for a barbecue. It's all insect screen. Uh, and there's another little courtyard for guest room just behind there. You can't, can't see that from there. Next one. Another view of that elevation. The fireplace on top has a big chimney and a, a glass box on its north side to uh, collect sun directly into the room and uh, the heat from that glass box window um, is stored in the, in the concrete shaft of the, of the fireplace. Next one, just another view. And the next one. And the next one. That's a, a passage or, or an axial passage which runs the full length of the house, such the barbecue courtyard there. This is a, a separate uh, uh, apartment as were for the, for the children, which has study bedroom and kitchen and dressing room and stuff in it, uh, which is a, an adjunct to the main house. Next. That's at the corner of the, of the house with the, with the courtyard, the screen courtyard inside it. And uh, next one. I took the detail of the, of the roof at that the corner. That's the landscaping we did in the front. It's just a big plantation. Uh, I forget what the name of the tree is, but the, the architects for the site, for the development, had uh, 
um, uh, combination of elm trees and, and uh, oak trees planted up down the main road, so we thought we'd go one better and have, a, have another species of tree. The idea is that the under story or the underneath of the trees, uh, you can look right through in, in a shaded umbrella over the whole site. And uh, it's just, they're all coming out from leaf now, but it's looking quite good. Next. That's the, you can see the berm that runs around the garage there, which gives you shelter for the, the entry courtyard. And that's the front gate, which is a, one of these cantilevered sliding gates that uh, are all automatic. Next one. This, this one is not, this house is not quite complete. It's, uh, it's being built by an owner builder who owns one of Melbourne's biggest and best precast concrete plants at Sunshine. He's, he's built all the, uh, the, the Melbourne cricket ground and all, most of the things in Victoria Harbour. He does road bridges and all sorts of things. He's an Italian, Italian family, like a lot of concrete is are. And uh, the sky was the, the limit, the scientific concern on the use of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, we, we had a marvellous time doing whatever we could uh, with the product. And, uh, uh, and it was quite, it's been quite an interesting uh, time for me to work on that. It's in the middle of a 15 acre vineyard in which he's got a whole lot of Italian grape varieties growing. Um, it, uh, it sits on top or halfway up the hill, so I've got a vertical uh, approach to this one rather than horizontal because it's, it's part of the hill rather than part of the, 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 the plane. <coughs> Those <coughs> panels there were, were poured in one piece and, and carted up and lifted up on site. They're four storeys high there, but they go down another story where there's a big basement or cellar underneath the, the courtyard. Next, that's the plan, and the house, the the uh, the, the vineyard extends right around the outside. Uh, the entry to the courtyard is there, mm -hmm. and in, in typical Italian fashion, he, he the family comes from uh, the Veneto area, just north of or north, northwest of Venice, and uh, he wanted something that uh, obviously was influenced by where they came from. So we've got the main house here which, which uh, uh, is uh, two-storey. There's, there's a tower there, which is four or five storeys. There's an entry courtyard where you come in. There's going to be a restaurant at this end. That's the winery. He intends to make grabber, or just still grabber, <laughs> at this end once he gets the license. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, sure he will. <laughs> Every time I go up there, have a, uh, you always have a cup of coffee with, with grapper in it. It's, uh, it's quite good. <laughs> um, from here, we drive into the carport and then through again into another courtyard, which is uh, going to be Kirschgrass again. Um, there's enclosed courtyards along this side, which form part of the retaining wall, and uh, they'll be planted out remote by the, the tropical forest, fairly dense planting. Next. There is a swimming pool on the, this is the main entry courtyard, there's a swimming pool which is elevated at the, the upper level and approached by the bridge across from the main house here. Um, the swimming pool is in the, the lower section and there's a cellar underneath there again, right underneath the full length, and the whole of this area is, uh, covers the cellar. The swimming pool's all covered in, uh, and we're currently building a big deck along the north side for access to it. The doors are Western Red Cedar on a steel frame, and the, all the balustrades are, are made up as, as you would for farm gates. Next, that's a view of the, of the main entry again, that's the front door. Uh, there's a box up here which sticks out of the study, which is all glass where he can sit and, 
and gaze at his grass growing. Uh, the living room is, or the dining room and then the living room over here. Next one. That's the front door with a, a glass canopy over it. Next. That's the, the exterior wall that goes up the, the tower. We've got, this place is west and we've got dark grey heat resistant glass on the outside there. The door there leads down to the cellar when they start having cellar door sales and you can see the start of the bridge across the top. The concrete here is all smooth finished, it's all off steel and form work. Um, whereas the parts here are, are, are in situ concrete. The bridge we've been able to keep fairly thin in its elevation in that that's uh, hollow core points uh, as he also makes hollow core as part of his business. The cedar planking or weatherboards are, 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 are run up the side of the cantilever stair. Next one. And that's the, uh, the tower itself. You can see that the, the doors are not quite finished yet, they're just being planked at the moment. Uh, front door again, main courtyard entry. Uh, there's a pond over here which we have to put a gate on to keep his dogs out. Um, and that's the main bedroom up top, which has a northern aspect. Um, next. You can see, you see the, the plank over the, the, the carport roof, the sliding doors, uh, and the main courtyard, and the swimming pool up, up here. Next. That's where he's going to distill his grabber once we get the roof on. Um, and on the outside there, there's, there's a, a big uh, cantilevered braced veranda, which is in the European style of a farmhouse where uh, the service yard, which is below this main level, can, uh, can be accessed and, and all this uh, netting for the vineyard can be stored in the, in the, uh, the building here. Next. And just the sliding doors to the carport and the uh, industrial balustrading across the top. That's a, a vertical view of the, of the stair tower. Next one. That's the, uh, that's the family room inside where there'll be a billiard room and the uh, picture theatre and, and what have you. For the family entertainment. But you can see all the in internal finishes here are all uh, straight off the form of steel form concrete. Um, they are able nowadays to patch any defects that occur in, in assembly or cartage uh, extremely well so that you really don't know that uh, they've been damaged. So in that sense concrete is just it's not as bad as it used to be. You, you're always very careful with concrete not to damage it because you can never get a true patch on it. But uh, they're able to do that now with, with new patching materials and uh, skilled labour. Next one. That's the uh, concrete benches in the kitchen. Two double bench, one on either side, and that's the pantry and uh, uh, workspace inside the, uh, the, the sliding door. Next one. That's the uh, that's the boys' bathroom, which looks out over the, over the bush. Um, modesty suggests that they may well have a, a blind there. They're not going to not have a blind. But, uh, it, uh, it, it's quite delightful up there of a morning in the east, sun coming in uh, for bathroom. Next one. Here are the boys' bedrooms. And down the end there, there's a gymnasium and a, a bath room with which caters for the swimming pool. The ceilings up there are all what they call wood text, which is a, it's a now, it used to be an Australian product, but now it's a New Zealand product. They don't make it here anymore. It's just a, a combined, a combination of uh, pine shavings and cement, which has very good acoustic and uh, insulation properties. This is in the, the main bedroom, 
we, we've got uh, a double level uh, with a about a balcony up top. The balcony is for the library, which you can see the shelves there. It's just been glazed, hence all these clamps holding the glazing bars in position. That is, the whole area there is supported by these big precast concrete trusses, uh, which uh, are probably over designed, but uh, they work for the <laughs> combination of, of uh, column sizes and, and uh, so many other things that uh, we have to take into consideration. There are three of these, so they've all been made off the same same formwork. Next, that's the view down onto the swimming pool. You've got a, a, a double skin a clear, or partly clear roof over that, so the whole of the pool is heated for summer for winter years at Mount Mazarin, um, and uh, should be put to good use. Next one. That's a view of the, of the loft with the library. Uh, we came across a beautiful old cast iron spiral stair which now connects at that end just there. You can't see the stair because of the reflection of the, the glass, but it's uh, just look behind. Next one. That's the view in the opposite direction where the, the study is in there and that box bay window sits just behind the the, the corner there where the door is. Next one. That's the study. The, uh, the little window there you see is, is the very narrow slit window which plays its wish and we've kept that uh, well restricted so that there'll be a timber shutter to close that off should the weather get too hot. Next. The view of the, the main courtyard with the, the winery building and the, and the store area there. Uh, the restaurant will be just down through that area there. The south side of that courtyard we're planning out in order to, to capture the, the north sun. The north side of the courtyard, the courtyard is protected from the sun by the buildings. Uh, the south side will be uh, planted out to soften the whole area. <coughs> Next one. That's the view from the approach side. Um, you can see the, the glass projecting box, the main bedroom, the library, and the reading room, and then the dining room right along the bottom. Next one. Just a variation on that. A lot of these walls here are, are freestanding. We uh, usually put them in a heavy putting pad with a slot in the top so that the, the wall can slide into the slot and be grounded up so that uh, it doesn't need any cross bracing to, to support it. There's the, the window box again. It's a break between the, the tower and the bedroom wing. The library is just behind that wall there. Most of the, these walls here uh, <coughs> are insulated because of the joinery work that goes on the back of them. And the joinery is, is uh, attached to the wall over a polystyrene uh, insulation board. So we, we meet the, uh, the energy rating standards required by doing that way. The first house, the Tool and Bale House, didn't have that. Uh, and that wouldn't, re wouldn't now meet the energy requirements because uh, the concrete does have a, a high, uh, a very low thermal rating. Uh, but in most cases, we've been able to put uh, furniture up along the wall, and that's really the only way of overcoming the, the problem we, we now have that uh, the building regulations uh, have brought about. Next one. It's just part of the door. These are the freestanding down pipes from the, from the gutter. Next one. A view of the, the weather board, the, the bathroom section projecting out. Next one. Reverse view. And the next one. The, uh, the, the, the uh, stair tower again. 